Sisters and brothers, welcome yet again on this Lord's Day to this hallowed sacred space, for surely we are all together in spirit in this time to worship together. So in this time, sisters and brothers, let us be open to what the Spirit is saying to the church through John's Gospel, the first chapter, verses 43 through 51. Let us be open to what the Spirit is saying to the church, the same to us. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the same city as Andrew and Peter. And then Philip went and found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses and the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph. From Nazareth. And Nathanael asked, Can anything good come from Nazareth? And Philip said, Come and see. Now, when Nathanael was coming towards Jesus, Jesus said of him, Truly, here is a man in whom there is no deceit. And Nathanael asked Jesus, Where is it that you even know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you sitting under the fig tree before Philip found you and called you. And Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. Truly you are the King of Israel. And Jesus replied, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you sitting under a fig tree? For surely you will see greater things than these. And Jesus said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see the heavens opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This, my sisters and brothers, is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If it may be said of the slavery era that the white person took the world and gave the black person Jesus, then it may be said of the Reconstruction era that the American aristocracy took the world and gave the poor white man Jim Crow. They gave him and her systematic racism, and when their wrinkled stomachs cried out for the food their empty pockets could not provide, he or she ate systematic racism. A psychological bird that told them that no matter how bad off he or she was, at least they were white people, better than black people. And yes, they consumed systematic racism. And when the white person's undernourished children cried out for the necessities that his or her low wages could not provide, they showed them the racist signs on the buses. And their white children, too, learned to feed upon systematic racism, their last outpost of psychological oblivion. Truly, there must be greater things ahead of and for creation. The words that I just shared with you were the words of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., after the march of 25,000 children of God from Selma, Alabama to Montgomery, Alabama, some 50 miles over five days of walking. These words, with some alterations such as substituting the term systematic racism for Jim Crow, which was the phrase representing the oppressive white society that existed all over this country and still persists, as systematic racial injustice as we are all hit with its blatant existence right square in the face these days too. Truly, there must be greater things for us to see and be. What King accomplishes here so well is an understanding. King focused on sinfulness while shining God's grace on the sinner. King, on those state capitol steps back on March 25, 
1965, implored his audience then, and us today, to see the result of what occurs when we individually, and as a society, turn to anything other than love, anything other than God and Christ, when we navigate the pains of this life. King touched at the heart of how in pain we humans naturally tend to compare ourselves to others in an effort to lift ourselves from our current reality. Sometimes lifting our own desires, our own dreams, our own sense of self-worth above another person or people, be it a loved one in our very lives or a group of people who are different from us. On this Lord's Day, this second Sunday after Epiphany, we discover the gift that is in Christ, that is Christ, in this first chapter of John's Gospel, his cosmic gospel. We encounter disciples, Philip and Nathaniel, as Philip is trying to get Nathaniel to come see the one whom Moses and the law and the prophets wrote. Nathaniel has a hard time thinking anything good can come from a place not highlighted in the ancient scriptures and has no current history of wonder. Nathaniel, right after meeting Jesus, joins Philip's chorus of praise. Truly, you are the Son of God. Truly, you are the King of Israel. All of this after Jesus remarks on noticing Nathanael while he felt he was alone under a fig tree. While the scripture does not state the nature of Nathanael's isolation under the fig tree, we can deduce that while some me time is always good for us all, Nathanael might very well have been relying solely on his own mind to lift him out of some dark place or experience. Nathaniel is about to get a divine understanding of Jesus that builds upon King's speech. So we arrive here at the verses of the day, the focus of this message for you and for me. You will see greater things than these. Very truly, I tell you, you will see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Jesus directs this image to Nathanael as he fulfills the scripture that we read in Genesis 28, a story that him and his culture would have been familiar with, one where Jacob had, had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth, with its top reaching to the heavens, and the angel of God they were ascending and descending on it. Jesus here, in these final two verses, is telling us that he, it is he who is the ladder. It is he whom we should seek when our earthbound bodies hunger for heaven, for the ability to live through pain. As MLK warned about consuming any one worldly group's ideology, over Christ's gospel messages of justice and love, we too have to self-evaluate the ways we consciously and unconsciously lift ourselves above others to find satisfaction or rest for our hearts and minds. We too have to take the time and welcome the help of God's Spirit that is, the help of those whom are equipped to help us self-analyze the ways we are critical of someone's existence or a group's existence among us. Jesus. Jesus is the ladder for our lives, the connection between heaven and earth that we all hunger for. Let us seek him and not our own ways. The gospel examples of Christ are vast, 
When we choose to associate with people deemed undesirable, we too are joining Christ where he was with the lawyers and tax collectors of his time. When we choose to listen to those who cry out of their oppressed lives, and we listen to them and accept them, we are meeting Christ and his efforts to make the last first and the first last. We are doing so instead of putting our own thoughts and words into the dry, famished mouths of our sisters and brothers who are truly oppressed in this world. When we choose not to blame someone's blindness on their family or background, but seek to be open to joining God's future glories, then we too are listening to Jesus while on the move as he corrects his disciples. Us, when we diminish someone living with a perceived weakness or sinfulness. We, too, must be deeply mindful of the messages we impress upon others. Are we filling ours and others' stomachs with systematic injustices to seek fulfillment? Or are we filled with Jesus? Humanity's connection to divine comfort and the bread of life. Do we seek to share Christ's love and grace with everyone, every single neighbor we see from day to day or on our screens? Sisters and brothers, we all must evaluate how we seek to nourish our minds and hearts. The bread of life or the processed sugars of worldly groups and individuals whom claim that canceling someone or condemning another's authentic self is the latter to climb? I believe not. The good news, sisters and brothers, is that if you, I, and all humanity think we've seen all the good that can come from God in this time and space, then we haven't seen anything yet, according to Christ. If we join Christ's works of love, grace, and acceptance of all people for exactly the way God made them, we will be shown the place where heaven and earth will be open, and the angels of God will ascend and descend upon the Son of Man before our very eyes. Dr. King had this dream, and the dream is not dead. It is only getting born in our listening of Holy Scripture today. Amen. Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door